All right, hello everybody. I hope you're all safe and well. This is lecture 21, part one. Um, we're gonna talk about just a quick overview of the uh, HD era, roughly the years 2005 to 2012. Uh, this is when HD or high definition TV broadcast became standardized. It's also when games uh, went from being 480p to 1080p, which just means how sharp the graphics look. So games move from standard definition to high definition as well, with one particular exception. And in this lecture, we're probably we're going to take a look at all three game consoles from this era. This is notable being the longest era of a game console, uh, with the Xbox 360 launching in 2005, and the Xbox One, the Wii U, or excuse me, the Wii U launches first in 2012, and then I think both Xbox One and PlayStation 4 are 2013. So most game console life cycles up to this point have been five or six years tops. This one stretched out into seven and eight, depending on which console you had. All right. So there are three consoles in this era. One, the Xbox 360 for Microsoft, the Sony PlayStation 3, and the Nintendo Wii. Uh, PC gaming is going to shift from retail to digital distribution. And because digital distri distribution is going to become the norm for PC gaming, they're going to see some new business models come out of that. There's also a big explosion of what's called casual or social gaming which is a different, sort of different from the traditional PC and console games. We'll take a look at that. And then uh, in 2007, Apple releases the iPhone, which uh, brings a whole new category to gaming with the smartphones and tablets, which a lot of, provide a lot of new opportunities and challenges for the game industry. So after the GameCube, we're gonna, the Nintendo, so excuse me, Nintendo after the GameCube. So what happens here? We talked a lot with GameCube about how Nintendo finished last for the first time in a console generation ever. Um, it was sort of the wrong system at the wrong time. No Grand Theft Auto, labeled as your little siblings or for a little kid console. And so they finished last. But while that was going on, the DS was wildly successful. We talked about that with the stylus and the double, you know, the dual screen. You know, as long as you could hold something in your hand and draw, you could play video games, which was a big change from the mantra of Xbox uh, and PlayStation controllers that have, you know, four buttons and two joysticks and four shoulder triggers and very complicated control schemes. So what Nintendo wanted to do was take this easy to play and unique mechanic of the DS and apply them to the console market. And in doing this, Nintendo hoped to create what's called a blue ocean market for themselves. The blue ocean in terms of business refers to an untapped or self-created market versus a red ocean, which refers to a mature, highly competitive market. So an example of this is if you think about um, drinks, right? The red ocean is, is cola, you know, Pepsi and Coca-Cola have fought for decades over market share. The market's pretty much a certain size and the competition is bloody. So there's blood in the water making it a red ocean, right? It's heated competition in a market that's small or finite, and the product is pretty predictable. When you want to do a blue ocean, what you would do is say, well, people don't want to drink cola. What people probably want is seltzer water. And so you make a market that didn't exist before. You start mass selling seltzer water or iced tea or whatever, trying to get a whole bunch of new consumers. So seeing a blue ocean is the notion of creating a market where there initially was none, going out where nobody has yet gone. So Nintendo decided that what Microsoft and Sony were doing, trying to get appeal to that same 25 year old guy demographic, um, you know, making games that were more graphically realistic and more violent and more mature was a dead end, right? There'll always be a market for that, but it always, but it'll sort of settle into a certain size and it won't really grow. What Nintendo wanted to do was create a market for themselves where they were the only one in there and thus they would reap all the profits. And the result of that is the Nintendo Wii. So the Wii comes out in 2006 for $250. It's much cheaper than the PlayStation 3, which uh, launched at 600 and the Xbox 360, which I think launched at 400 but it might be $5. i would have to go back and double check. Um, just a fun fact, Nintendo didn't lose money on the sale of this console. Uh, in terms of the Razer and the Blade, this is a big deal because they're actually making a little bit of money on every console instead of losing money. Um, it relies on mass motion control, which this is the Blue Ocean strategy. They were depending on mass market appeal. <sighs> They also innovated by letting users create Miis, which are avatars that could be used in games. So you can make um, folks who look like you or your family or your friends, and you could play them in different games. And we'll see an example of that in the stream on Thursday. Worldwide, it had sales of over 100 million plus. Uh, it beat both the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, despite being less, of, less technically advanced. 
It is the market leader of this generation of hardware sales. Uh, the console was not as technically advanced as a competitor, so it had no high definition output. This is because when the Wii launched, high definition television was still relatively new and it wasn't widespread yet. Uh, high definition broadcast in the United States, I believe, officially started in 2005. So again, it wasn't widely, uh, widely available everywhere right off the bat. So Nintendo just decided not to worry about it. Uh, it wasn't as powerful in terms of sheer processing power, so it can produce the same level of graphics as the PS3 and Xbox 360. Uh, it didn't have any DVD or Blu-ray playback. It didn't even actually have digital sound. And it did have a little bit of online, but compared to its competitors, it's a very it's very weak, right? It doesn't support internet gameplay very well. And it really, they just don't market it that way. They really market this as a family console or a console for your house. They do have a little bit of online functionality. One of the biggest things that came out of them in this era was the virtual console service, where for the first time you could legally pay for versions of old Nintendo games and other things like Sega Master System games and Neo Geo and Turbo Graphics. This was a really big plus for the Nintendo Wii because this was the first time a lot of these games were legally available. Um, emulators had been floating around for a while, and of course you could get torrents of the ROMs and stuff from the old cartridges. But this was, these were legitimate, and then you knew they were going to work well, copies of all these games. They did have a digital distribution service for software and games called WiiWare, but they didn't really promote it the way that Xbox and PlayStation did. So Wii is really best known for implementing motion control or waggle for games, and it uses this really weird controller. One of the reasons Nintendo went with this kind of crazy shape is because it kind of looks like a TV remote, which everyone's familiar with. It only has one uh, D-pad, a big A button, a couple little one and two buttons, a little trigger down here on the back side, right? But the strength of it was that it allowed you to mimic real life movements when you, so you could play games. So if I was playing a golf game on an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation, I'd have a controller that looks like this, right? I'd have to pull the stick back for a swing and do this and hit the button at the right time and all blah, 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 blah. If I'm playing golf on the Wii, I literally pretend this is a golf club and I make the motion I would make when I was golfing or playing tennis or fishing or whatever it was. And since everyone knows how to make those real life movements, it makes it easier for people who don't normally play games to play games. It's again, it's an example of taking that DS strategy and turning it into a very viable way to control games. This easy to play casual aspect of, aspect of Wii games was one of the reasons it's so wildly successful. The drawback to this was that the Wii was widely regarded as a system for casual gamers or non-gamers, right? So people who are very into gaming culture, who play a lot of um, heavy games, FPS games, RTS, Dooms, uh, your Gears of War, your racing simulations, kind of looked at the Wii and were sort of like, eh. But Nintendo doesn't care because to Nintendo, that's the Red Ocean, right? The hardcore gaming market that's going to play League of Legends and Overwatch and Doom and, and all these other games is a smaller market than everybody else. And Nintendo's plan with the Wii was to market to everybody else. So making gaming accessible to the most number of people possible. And it works. So when we talk about casual and social gaming, just so we're sure what we're talking about, generally when you say a casual game or first an easy to play, generally a nonviolent game that anyone can play. And in recent years, particularly during this era, casual gaming sort of exploded. So it grew much faster and it was a potentially much bigger audience than the traditional gaming market of like people who like Grand Theft Auto and things like that. Uh, casual games have a much more varied audience than traditional hardcore games. One of my favorite stories about the Wii during its heyday was it was adopted in a lot of nursing homes and assisted living facilities because old people enjoyed doing the tennis or the motions and then you can, they could actually play these games. Again, attempting to appeal to everyone who's not a core gamer. Uh, here it is yet again, the same song and dance we always have with Nintendo. The first party games are the key games on the Nintendo system. The biggest one of all is Wii Sports. It was a packing game, and packing games have sort of faded from the marketplace for a while. But Wii Sports came with the game, and it was a great demonstration of motion. It had the tennis and a little bit of baseball and some boxing and fun stuff. Uh, Wii Fitness, which used a sort of specialized balance board. You can see it there in this in the slide. Uh, image. It was like a balance board for a fill and you could do like some light aerobics and some balancing exercises on it. So pretty neat. And then of course, all the Nintendo franchises, Super Mario Galaxy, Smash Brothers Ball, Mario Kart, Zelda, etc., etc. Nintendo sells you first party hardware to sell you first party games. It's kind of the order of the day for them. Third party issues are interesting with the Nintendo Wii. Uh, third party support for the Wii was kind of tepid at launch. Um, EA was a little hesitant when it first came out, and they eventually 
did release some titles on it, but it gained support because it, in the early years of the Wii, we're talking 2006 to 2009 or 10, it just, it sold like crazy. It was just super wildly successful. So a lot of people started jumping on the bandwagon. Um, Ubisoft in particular with their Just Dance and Rabbids franchises did really well on the Wii. But a couple of years into it, what happens is the third party support starts to dry up again, very similar to the GameCube as sales of the system start to fall off. The other issue was that third party support was problematic because again, if they had a big hit game on Xbox or PS3, it was difficult for game developers to port their stuff back to the Wii due to the lack of power and lack of online gameplay features and things that were sort of standard on the other two competing consoles. So this is the game, this is sort of the conundrum of casual gaming and it was first sort of exemplified by the Wii. Over time, Wii console sales, they explode. If you look at the chart from 2006 to 2008, they just keep going up. And I mean, it's in the millions, it's crazy. Um, but what happens is, is that it eventually starts dying out around 2009 and then in 2010, it starts sort of falling off a cliff almost. And part of this is because uh, one, the Wii Sports came with it. Uh, casual gaming themselves, casual gamers just don't buy as many games as hardcore gamers do. This is really tricky for third-party developers when game development is starting to cost into the millions and millions of dollars to make a big game. You know, people who want just a fun, easy-to-play experience don't care about God of War, or God of War's exclusive, excuse me, that's a bad example, don't care about Call of Duty, which is another big franchise in this area. They don't care about Gears of War, and they don't really care about always having a new game to play, particularly if they only game occasionally or once in a while. And we had the lowest attach rate in this generation of consoles. A lot of people bought the Wii and were happy with Wii Sports and maybe one or two other games, and that was it. So again, uh, this was a really tricky issue for them. The success that we did have Microsoft and Sony courting this market, um, but neither of them really did it successfully. Xbox launched the Kinect camera. Uh, PS3 basically copied the Wii with the Move peripheral. But Nintendo's strategy made them the overall market leader. But there was questions about whether or not this was a sustainable strategy over, over time. So if you look at this graph, you can sort of see what happens. Here's the Wii is this big pink line. So 2006, here's 2007, look at 2000, or 2008, seven, here's 2008, 2009, and then just straight down. Whereas with the Xbox 360, you get this more slow, higher growth. The PlayStation line is a little bit hard to see. The PS3 is this little thin blue line that's on a similar trajectory. So what happens here? The Xbox, the Wii, excuse me, the Wii sold really well from 2006 to 2009, and then it really declines as this era wears on. In contrast, the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 start out slower, but over time do much better in sales. Xbox 360 did really well in North America. So why is this? There are two reasons. One, HDTV adoption went up from 2005 on, so people wanted a game console that could sort of showcase their cool new TVs, right? That's one reason. Uh, being able to play movies on it, which the uh, Nintendo Wii could not do. The other issue is that the Apple iPhone was released in 2007, and the same people who really liked the easy waggle controls and sort of the fun, easy-to-play games on the Wii were suddenly suddenly had a new platform available to it. And everybody, no, but not everybody needs a game console. Pretty much everybody needs a phone. So when the smartphones come out and they start having these easy to play games, think of things like Bejeweled or Candy Crush or whatever, you know, Temple Run, Angry Birds, there's a million of them. We'll talk a little bit about those, those next week. But again, that same big market who suddenly would have only bought your Nintendo Wii to play one or two games had a new platform. They had to have a phone and now this thing played games too. So do I need a Wii as much? And Nintendo had really struggled with this. And then third-party support started tailing off as the sales really slowed down. And then I asked why the Nintendo was not able to recreate the success of the Wii with the Wii U. And the Wii U is kind of a problematic game console. It wasn't clear that it was a new console. The marketing was confusing. And it just lacked that sort of like wow factor that the Wii had back in 2006. So to review the Wii, Nintendo does become the market leader. Their Blue Ocean strategy works. Remember, the Blue Ocean is creating a new market as opposed to competing in a market that's mature and is red from the blood of the competition between people fighting over that limited market share. The Wii did demonstrate to the game industry that casual gaming was a very large and potentially lucrative market. Uh, First-party games are always key to the success of a Nintendo console. And third-party support again becomes an issue during the second half of the Wii's life cycle. So we'll stop here with the Nintendo Wii. Remember, you can email Logan and I with any questions. Um, extra credit still available via Logan. 
and we will just keep on trucking through the material and we will get through this. I hope you're all safe. I hope you're all healthy. Take care of yourselves and I'll see some of you on the streams this week. All right. Thank you.